Thank you for selecting a Pulsive Heater cooling tower controller for your application. This video is intended to familiarize you with the Microvision EX controller. Please refer to the detailed information in the installation manual that was provided with your controller. And as always, adhere to all local, state, and national codes. The front panel of the Microvision EX features an LCD display. There are also four buttons, an up and down button, and two soft buttons beneath the bottom of the LCD. The purpose of these buttons will be indicated in text at the bottom of the LCD. There are also several LEDs on the front of the unit. These LEDs reflect the state of the relay they are associated to. Upon booting your Microvision EX, you'll be welcomed by the home screen. Featured on the home screen will be the name of the unit, your date and time, any of your probe readings, the temperature, water meter readings, and any of the 4 to 20 milliamp in readings if they are enabled. The HOA function or hands-off automation is a useful feature for servicing your pumps or troubleshooting any electrical problems. To access the HOA screen, you can simply press the bottom left button from the home screen. You next select the relay you would like to adjust. You can set each relay to either on for 5 minutes off or have the relay respond to your normal programming by setting it to auto. Accessible from the home screen is the menu. You can reach this by pressing the bottom right button. Featured on the home screen is access to the Relay HOA, Configure Options, your Settings, Timers, as well as Communications. The Configure menu is where you can access your date and time settings, adjust your digital inputs, enable or disable your 4 to 20 milliamp in and output functions, adjust your units, reset meter totals, change the language of the unit, configure display settings, enable software passwords, view the version of the software, as well as initialize a factory reset. In addition to being able to set your date and your time, you can also adjust the format they are displayed in. The date can be in month, day, year, or day, month, year. The time can also be configured in 12-hour or 24-hour mode. The digital input screen is where you can set your drum level sensors and set up your water meters. Drum level sensors can either be configured to open or closed logic, and alarms can also be configured dynamically. Water meters can either be set up as a dry contact type or a Hall effect water meter. Each have their own independent multiplier. The 4 to 20 milliamp out and input functionalities are enabled and disabled here. The unit can either be configured in gallons or liters. Here is where you can reset any of your water meter values. The unit can support multiple languages. Your language can be selected here. Your display can be dynamically set up. You can adjust your contrast or brightness levels, adjust the name of the controller which appears in the home screen, 
Configure the home screen to scroll automatically. Resize your alarm notifications. And configure a display dampener. Enabling a display dampener will cause your probe readings to be averaged over the specified length of time. Another feature are software passwords. You can enable two password types, an administrator password, which has access to all of the menu structures, and a user password, which can be dynamically configured. You can also view the software version and initialize a factory reset, which will restore your program to its default settings. The settings page is where you'll configure your probes, conductivity, pH, ORP, and any of your 4 to 20 peripherals. All probe types are configured the same way. This is an example of how to set up your conductivity probe. The pH and ORP probe will be done identically. To set up your conductivity probe, you need to choose your set point type. You can choose between rising or falling. Rising type means that the output activates when the input goes above the set point. Falling type activates the output when the value goes below the set point. Your set point is where the desired function will begin. The differential, or dead band, is the offset value which must be satisfied before the relay will turn off. Limit timers can also be enabled. The limit timer is the maximum amount of time you would like the relay to remain on until an alarm is triggered. You can set whether you would like the relay to remain on or turn off upon an alarm state triggering here. Calibration of your probes is also essential. Some things to remember is that temperature fluctuations can affect some readings. Make sure the probes are in the desired solution for a minimum of 10 minutes. If using a handheld to calibrate, also make sure the handheld has temperature compensation. High and low alarms can also be configured. These are values which, if the reading goes beyond, will trigger an alarm. If you have a 4 to 20 output board, this can also be configured here. First, make sure it is enabled from the Configure menu. To set up a 4 to 20 output board, you will first need to configure the type. After setting the type, go to the settings page. This is where you will scale the reading. Here you can tie the actual probe reading to a milliamp value. Four to twenty input boards can also be configured. It's very similar to configuring your four to twenty output. First, you must specify the type. After specifying your type, you then need to calibrate the board. You may need buffer solutions to perform this. The top row indicates your low point. The bottom row is the high point. You will need two buffer solutions. Place your probe in its low buffer solution. Wait for the unit to adjust.
enter the correlating value into the controller and enter through just the top row. Next, place your probe in your high buffer solution. Wait for your unit to adjust again. Enter the correlating value and then enter through the bottom row. Your 4 to 20 input board should now be configured. The timers page is where you will set up your remaining relays. The relays can be configured as pulse timers, percent timers, 28 day timers or biocides, percent post bleed, limit timer, or alarms. To set up a pulse timer, you need to configure the feed time or the desired amount of time you would like the pump to turn on when your accumulator set point has been reached. Set up your accumulator set point. If you have more than one water meter in your unit, you will need to point this pulse timer to the specific water meter you would like to look at. There are two parameters when setting up a percent timer. You will need to set your cycle time and your percentage of minutes you would like the timer to run. For example, 10% of 60 minutes would be 6 minutes of feed time every 60 minutes. A 28-day timer, or biocide, can have four programs running on each relay. To set up a single program of a biocide timer, you need to configure the weeks, days, start time, feed time, and if applicable, specify a pre-bleed, minimum conductivity, and bleed blockout. A 28-day timer can be set to run on any individual week, odd weeks, even weeks, or every week. Any combination of weekday can also be selected. You may choose all of the days or a single day. The start time is when you would like to either begin your feed cycle or a pre-bleed if applicable. A pre-bleed time is the maximum amount of time you would like the bleed function to be force enabled prior to a feed cycle. If there's a minimum conductivity you would like the tower to reach to immediately begin your feed cycle, this can also be set. Next, specify your feed time or how long you would like to feed chemical to prevent your tower from bleeding costly chemicals, you can also set a bleed lockout or the amount of time you would like to prevent your tower from bleeding water from the system. Note that this timer begins when your feed cycle begins. For the lockout to last longer than your feed time, please specify it as such. Percent post bleed keeps track of the time the bleed relay is turned on. When that bleed shuts off, it will then bleed for the specified percentage. The timer also includes a limit timer to prevent overfeeding. A limit timer, also known as a bleed and feed timer, will mirror your bleed relay. This timer also has its own independent limit timer. You can also configure any of these timers to be alarms. They will turn on when any alarm on the system is present. All timers also feature a bio-tracking option. From this menu, you can configure how a timer will respond when a 28-day timer's feed time is running. The relay will not turn on if skip is enabled if another 28-day timer feed cycle is running. None will cause the timer to ignore the presence of other 28-day timers.
the Microvision EX also features data logging capabilities. These functions are found in the Communications page. The USB function features exporting data logs, exporting config files, importing config files. You can also erase your data log, rename the file, and set your logging interval. To use the USB functionality, insert a thumb drive into the provided port you should see USB display in the bottom left of the screen. You can now import and export files. A graphing tool is provided on our website to graph the data log export files. This will allow for fast digestion of the tower's functionality since your last visit. This has been a short overview of the Microvision EX. If you have any additional questions, refer to your manual, contact your local sales rep, visit our website, pulsatron.com, or call our tech support department.